Hold on guys, so we're gonna do something different. I'm gonna actually start doing, I'm gonna take this from me, mama, okay? I'm gonna start doing dashing my way to the trailer park, okay? I'm gonna do a series every day, dashing my way to the trailer park, okay? And I'm gonna tell you guys what I'm doing in regards to getting there. You know, it's gonna be more of like me doing DoorDash and Grubhub, even though the majority of the money is gonna come from sports betting, that's the only way to really, you know, get enough accumulated to pay for a 50 to $55,000 trailer. You know, this decision to chase and fight and, and the, to you know, work myself into this trailer is a decision that it might be, might be one of my best decisions because, you know, from the outside looking at it, I know a lot of you guys are um, actually tired of hearing, you know, me trying to sell you guys on the trailer. But you gotta understand, this is excitement. You know, same way when I told you guys I was gonna move into the high rise, I made it happen. This is me telling you guys, I'm gonna move into that trailer and I'm going to uh, make it happen. Now, I know the comment section, a lot of y'all are so confused, thinking that I don't really know, I'm not doing my research, I'm just, you know, the idea I came up with that I'm gonna run with. You gotta understand, when I looked into getting an SUV to do chauffeuring, you know, chauffeuring and, and transportation, you know, I did, I was looking into that because I figured, well, why not just get the SUV, I can drive people around, in Wilmington, you know, uh, Myrtle Beach on the weekends, Charlotte weekends, make some money. You gotta understand, I was going a different path. I was gonna get the SUV and then get a nice apartment and I was really doing all that to be flossy. But then when I started to like do what I used to do back in the day when I was actually winning, take notes, write down information that I pick up on and do a, a cost analysis and figure out, you know, is this really worth it? I came up with this idea because of the fact my cousin once again mentioned it to me and then I did my math and I did and I'm like this makes perfect sense so you gotta understand you know the trailer that I want it ain't because of me trying to impress anybody it ain't because of me trying to keep it with Joe's is it because everything I feel like I have a need is in this trailer okay I want it to be you got to be under 45 foot long that way I don't have to um, you know get a CDL I wanted to have at least a full bathroom that's comfortable enough to shower in. I want to have a garage so I can put my toy in, which would be my motorcycle, my son's toy, his, his bike that I've been getting him. Uh, I want to have the ability to have, if my daughter comes to town, have, you know, enough room for her and him to stay comfortably. You know, she's in the living room, he's in the back, um, in a garage that you have the bed pulled down or you have two couches that you can turn into beds. Then I, I want to have a comfortable enough um, bedroom for me that would be all the way in the back so or in the front of um, the um, RV the toy hauler so you have a bunch of different options so I'm gonna be real with you guys right now I have about $13,000 okay I have $13,000 to work with with my credit I can get approved with like $10,000 down but the issue is proof of income I don't have enough proof of income to get approved now I could use fake pay stubs which is illegal but I'm not gonna do that because of the fact I don't do that. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna put myself in a situation to get in trouble for lying on a financial, because that can come back to bite you. It's eight years from now, you can get caught up in that because if it comes out that you fake pay stubs, you get in trouble. That should not be an option. I shouldn't have to do that. I should be able to just get the trailer, the legal, the right way. Now, I'm gonna tell y'all this. The reason why, once again, I came to Vegas is because I figured I could do, I could do DoorDash, Grubhub to get proof of income. Okay, but on top of that, I know with sports betting, I can run up a big bag. I know a lot of y'all are like, oh my God, you're trying to make it off of sports betting. You got to understand, guys, you know, I have had weeks here that I made $20,000. Now, this strategy that I'm going to tell you guys about, you guys can do too. I'm going to tell you guys exactly what I'm doing. You have a sports book with Heritage that offers your seventh deposit for free. And I'm telling you guys this because this is what I'm going to do. And I don't want any of y'all saying I didn't try to help you guys. I should make this member only, but I'm going to put this for everybody. So what you do is if you're in a legal state to sports bet, you're going to go to the sports book, sit there. And what happens is say you have the say you have the Bears versus the Browns, okay? Say the over and under is 40 points. Say that you bet, you start off by you want to hedge everything. So what you want to do is the sports books that are local – their lines are gonna be soft compared to the online book. So you might have a line that might be over and under 38 and a half, 
is the over and under. And on the online sports book, that 38 and a half is really 39 and a half over and under. So you take 38 and a half over, and then you take 39 and a half under, now you have a middle. You can't lose. You push. Now this is the reason why that makes sense. Because if you can get both at 10% juice, that means you're only losing if you bet $1,000, you lose $100 because of the juice. But this is the good thing about this strategy. If you put $5,000 in Heritage, okay, and you put $5,000 in the sports book locally, you're trying to lose all the money out of Heritage. And what I mean by that is, you're, if you can make a $5,000 bet on the under, if you think that it's gonna go over, but then you're still making a bet on over for 5,000, or it'd be 4,500 to win 49, and then you know the other other way would be under would be 4,900 uh, to win, um, or 4,950 to win 4,500. But you make that wager on both sides to where you only lose the juice, which would be $450. But what happens is when you load up on Heritage seven times you lose the deposit, they give you they give you the average of your seven deposits you made. They give you the average of that in free play. Now that free play is cash free play to where you get the money straight up. No questions asked, you get the money. You only have to wager that money five times, meaning you gotta wager that money 20, or um, you gotta wager 2,500 in bets to cash that money out, okay? So now what happens is every time you deposit the $5,000, you get 10% bonus instantly. Okay, so that means you're getting $5,500 in that account. That pays for the juice that you're losing, wagering that $5,000 to lose. So that means when they give you that free play, you get um, $5,000 in free play. It's gonna be fresh, free cash, okay? But you have to lose, meaning that you need to make sure the bets that are on the sports book, the real one, or the one that's physically there in your state that's legal, you gotta make sure those bets win and the bets that are going to lose remember you're not losing bets you're just pushing they're losing on heritage that way all the money from heritage ends up in so that means if you got ten thousand total you have at the end of this 90 or if you have ten thousand you have ninety um five hundred dollars in the real sports book you have to do that five times or seven times which is thirty five thousand dollars in losses on heritage and then you should have in your other book, you should still have, and when it's all said and done, you should still have $9,500 to work with in that real sports book. My, with you losing in Heritage, $45,000 worth of bets. I know a lot of y'all might be confused, and if you want more, reach out directly and I'll explain it to you guys, but I'm only explaining to people that make deposits onto my, my bookie, which is, the link is below. You make a deposit, I'll explain it to you personally, because I'll get uh, referral bonus off of your deposit. That's the only way I'm going to explain it. I'm sorry. Unless you're a member. If you're a member, I'll explain it for free. I'll take time. I'll give you a phone call and we can, I can give you the game on it. So now what happens is when you get that $5,000 bonus, okay, you're going to now make wagers to where you're going to lose all the money out of Heritage again and it all goes into the other sports book. And if you do it right, you're going to walk away with $4,500 in that other sports book, which takes your total to fourteen thousand dollars. Now, mind you, okay, you're getting reward points with a heritage. So, if you lose forty-five thousand, you're gonna have at least three hundred dollars in, you know, reward points um, that you're gonna have to be able to cash out. So that means that you're gonna have at least forty-eight hundred dollars that you make in profit doing it this way. Now, this is the reason why I, I was saying eighty-five hundred you walk away with, because what happens is there's games, there's football games that teams are scoring a bunch of points or teams are blown out a team what you do is you when a blowout starts to happen you take that team the winning team the blowout the team that's blowing the other team out you take that team on the with the real sports book to win and then on heritage you wait until that line goes all the way up and you you notice in those underdog schools that get blown out they don't have a chance they don't score a point you take that team with heritage once the number goes all the way up. But when you have say Ohio State versus Akron, it's gonna be Ohio State minus like 30. When Ohio State goes up 45 points, now you take the under like 38 points, okay? Or I'm not under, but you take the um, plus 38 with Akron because the plus 38 is gonna be 
on the heritage side, it's gonna be plus the points. So if you take a seven point difference or a six point difference with heritage, you're gonna have that line is gonna be plus like 300, okay? Or plus 200. You take that because guess what's gonna happen? You only have to put 250 to break even. So you catch juice lines like that to where you, if you have an over, you take the over and say that number runs up like, like two touchdowns or higher, then you take the under when you know it's going to go over because you already got your over and you're going to win that. Just take the under because you got to buy it. You got to go all the way. You can't like gamble. You can't take a chance thinking, okay, this is going to win for sure. I'm not going to hedge it unless there's just a game that they just keep scoring. You don't want to like give away free money that you, you know you won the bet. But if the game is still close to where the teams cannot score in the second half, maybe you want to take that under, okay? And it's a little more complex. I gave you the simple way of looking at it. All you're doing is putting, getting the money out of one account onto the other account. And if you continue doing that, you do that seven times, you're walking away with pretty much $5,000. If you can convert 35,000 from one sports book, Heritage or into the other sports book. Now, this video is for sports bettors only because I know a lot of y'all that don't sports bet ain't gonna understand, not gonna understand what I'm saying. And like I said, I'll give you guys the game if you want it. That's part of the value that I'm gonna offer you guys. But that's the way that for me to achieve this goal of getting, <coughs> excuse me, the trailer. Because you, you have baseball you can do it with, you got basketball you can do it with, and you got football you can do it with. Basketball is tough because sometimes you take the over. I mean, you take the under, and then you try to hedge. They'll score a couple points real fast, and then now the number goes up, and now you're, you know, locked in. You're stuck. Football is easier because you, it takes more time to score a touchdown, okay? Baseball is somewhat easier because you can hedge um, in the um, timeout, okay, period, or the commercial break. So you got to understand, the whole point is you're not gambling. All you're doing is trying to catch the juice at 10%. So 110, you're trying to catch the juice at, and you're – hedging both sides so that way you can ultimately push and then if you do this once again you're getting five thousand dollars profit so most people like me who do this you could do this two times a day you can double up you can pretty much make seventy thousand dollars in action to end up with ten thousand dollars each day but it's stressful only if you get that urge that i fail at to where if i see a game running it up it's winning do I really want to bet against that winning bet if I know that bet's winning? Yes, because that's the strategy, and that works 100%. But it sucks because you know the game is going to win, and you're hedging against it, but you can't have it both ways because you start gambling, meaning if you're taking a risk because you're not hedging the other side, that those teams might not score the first quarter. They might not score no points. A USC game, they were projected to go over, I think it was 61 points or something. It was something high, but they didn't score the last eight minutes of the game. And I won off of um, betting the second quarter, the highest quarter. I think the second quarter was like 21 points. And I think um, in the fourth quarter, it was like, yeah, 21 points or 18 points. In the, I think in the fourth quarter, they didn't score like 10 points. I think it was like um, plus 300 that the second quarter was going to be the highest quarter because they thought that. USC and the other team was going to score eight more points. So you got to understand, um, you can always lose a bet, no matter what. Even if the bet looks guaranteed, teams will just stop scoring, just run the ball and like, you know, nobody. And then the other team that's crappy, they're not going to score because, you know, they're playing against a, a big school. So so the whole point of what I'm trying to explain to you is if you do this, the whole goal is to get that free play. Okay. So now with that said, what I plan on doing and intend on doing is this strategy and I'm gonna to look to do it to achieve uh, the free play once minimum to two times a day. Meaning, I'm looking to make $35,000 in action to make $5,000. But I'm hoping to do that two times a day. Meaning, lose 70,000 out of heritage, but 70,000 in winning plays on the other sports book, okay? Meaning, I'm getting $5,000 two times, okay? And remember, this is free money. So when you get that five thousand dollars, you don't have to wager to get the money. No, that's just cash in your account. You just got to wager five times to get the money out. But what you do is you have to go and you have um, you know, five thousand in losses from Heritage again in another book. Now it's five thousand cash. And then with Bavada, they offer three two hundred dollar bonuses every single week. Okay, so you can cash in on those bonuses, but then you just got to lose the bonus money by winning in 
the um, real at the real sports book or um, heritage to um, convert that two hundred dollars of straight cash they give you because you got to wager like twenty thousand in action to cash out. But you don't got to do that. You just make that some bravado that's losing because the same exact bet on the other side is winning. You do that, you got six hundred dollars with bravado every week. You're gonna get okay, and then you get on the other side. Uh, and mind you, Bravada loves it when you lose, and they give you free action. So you can do the same thing with Bravada, okay? There's so many options. It's all about hedging, okay? I can't say it enough. And I'm only giving you guys this game because this is what I start doing this weekend. I got my money coming in. I'm going to do it this weekend, and I want to bring some of you guys along with me. Now, if you're going to be dismissive of this, it's all good. You ain't going to see that negative energy no more with me, like, going off people. I'm going to just ignore it, okay? Because this is something foolproof guaranteed. And this is in my first week doing it. And my goal is to achieve um, and get to $60,000 in a month, okay? And if I can do this, just like I did the 25000 with that strategy with the basketball tournament, a lot of you guys didn't believe that. A lot of you guys was like, oh my God, this is stupid. Like, why you didn't make all the money? I made two straight years, except last year I made $25,000, uh, pretty much 18000 after I took that last L. Uh, but that was the normal basketball tournament. That was on, on the international games. But this year... I made a little over $14,000 with the basketball tournament, a two-week tournament, okay? So this strategy, I'm going to try out, and I know it's going to work. Um, it's foolproof. And, you know, the whole goal is to get the trailer. And I'm going to do another video in a second about the trailer situation because I know a lot of you guys are still confused on why I'm going so hard for the trailer. But with that said, I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Hit the like button if you like the video. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Let me do a thumbnail real quick. So if... So remember, if any of you guys want personal one-on-one -on -one time to explain this to you, look, you have to add $100 onto my bookie with my referral code that's in the link or in the description below. If it's, if it's not there, you don't see it, then I'll send it directly to you. Don't make a deposit unless you hit me up first. So that way I can uh, explain to you how this works because I don't want nobody doing this without thoroughly knowing. And if you already sports bet and you know the game, you don't need my help. You got the game. I'm giving you this value, okay? And uh, besides that, guys, we're going to see more videos from me because I'm dashing my way to the trailer park, okay? Dashing my way to the trailer park. That's going to be a new series I'm going to do. I'm going to talk about me doing DoorDash and all these apps. I start, I, actually, I got, I was allowed to go on now, but I timed out because I wanted to um, go hit the weight room. But I start at 11 o'clock today. So I'm going to start at 11, actually 11.30 today. Starting at 11.30, and I'm going all the way until, looks like I'm going until 10 today. Yeah, I'm going to go until 10.30 today. So, we're going to, um, you know, make some money. We're going to grind out the DoorDash, but ultimately, it's all about the weekend. So, with that said, appreciate y'all for tuning in. That's all I got. Leave a comment if you would like. I'm out. Hit the like button. Peace.